I feel it's become a daily segment to update you on what the latest bonkers, bizarre, counterproductive, unrelatable attack against Vice President Kamala Harris from Fox News and the MAGA media echo chamber is. And today you have Elizabeth Hasselbeck uh, on Fox News now upset. And actually, before I say it, let me remind you <laughs> that, you know what, before I play this for you, because it's so absurd, and then the Harris campaign seemed to mock these attacks in a uh, campaign stop. But before doing any of that, let me remind you, instead of just listing off the things, my uh, colleague Cole put together an example uh, or a few examples of how the Harris campaign has just broken the brains of a lot of MAGA folks, including Trump himself and people on Fox News, where now they're attacking her over uh, hugging, laughing, etc. Here is this, and it's contrasted with, in the video Cole put together, her dancing, as if to say, bring it on. Have you heard her laugh? That is the laugh of a crazy person. That is the laugh of a crazy person. It's the laugh of a lunatic. As the hugger in chief. Hugger in chief. Yeah, that's DEI. She giggles away, you know, her time. And I just have to call her out on using the word joy. How weird is that? There's the DEI press secretary telling you that the DEI vice president is the future of the party here. And so the future looks kind of dim for the Democrats. I say that I am much better looking than her. I think I'm much better. Much better. I'm a better looking person than Kamala. This whole gender bender uh, type of campaign was going on where they didn't really want to celebrate I think a female. It's a very different looking Kamala Harris. She very much embraces uh, a, being a female. She happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> just a little update as we get into the most recent example that we can add to the compilation. The f well, you just talked about Kamala Harris supposedly eating a bag of Dor Doritos so emotionally charged after hearing this. That's the commander in chief, potentially. That's the emotional response of the leader of the free world is to binge eat a bag of Doritos? Are you kidding me? Can you imagine Putin, how he deals with things, chugging down a bag of Sour Patch Kids because he's depressed about something not going his way or back of the day, Soleimani? What is he, binging on Funyuns? I doubt it. I doubt that's the actual response of an elite leader, whether you agree with what they're leading or not. I just, I'm not an expert on campaigns. I'm not, all right, I'll admit it. I haven't been in this space the longest compared to my counterparts. But I, my gut tells me as Harris runs against the threat to democracy, runs for a hopeful vision based on policy solutions to the problems that people are facing, runs for protecting children in schools, uplifting children in schools, for investing in infrastructure, lowering prescription drug costs, properly treating our veterans. I don't know if a Trump campaign that runs against joy, as was mentioned in that video, hugging, laughter, and Doritos. I don't know if that's the winning <laughs> campaign. Now, again, I'm not trying to gaslight anybody. I know they also are bringing up inflation, and we've addressed that so many times, okay? We also are going to talk between now and the election a lot about their talking points about the border, about how they're saying Kamala Harris is too far left. All those discussions are happening too, but the mistake that's being made is, of course, you're going to suck all of the media attention over to Trump saying that he's better looking 
than Kamala Harris if he keeps saying stuff like that or his vile attacks against her intelligence or the disgusting stuff we've heard on Fox News. One of the guys featured there also made that Hawk Tua comment just disgusting in one of his attacks. So, of course, that becomes what a lot of people are seeing on social media. That's what goes viral. That's what's noticeable in a way that Trump quietly mumbling about high prices for an hour before getting excited about a personal attack won't. And so that's why we keep circling back to it. And that's why I think that compilation was important. But what was so awesome is it seems a response to this. So let me actually give you the context first. A story came out about Kamala Harris telling some media outlet that when Trump won in 2016, she was so horrified. And the question was something like, or the, the, the answer that she was giving was talking about how she coped with that. And her reaction, which a lot of people can re- relate to, is sitting stunned that Trump was winning this election and eating a bunch of Doritos. <laughs> And so you did have this moment on the campaign trail. Getting a bag of Doritos. And you might be thinking, Luke, Luke, this isn't that consequential. Nay, I say, uh, because one of the things, and you've heard me say this going back years One of the things the Democratic Party struggled with was playing the game a little bit, was taking the news cycle. We just talked about a different segment. Trump's superpower was commanding the narrative, and then the Democratic Party would be reacting to the narrative. But what the Harris campaign is doing is, in their social media game, in their rhetoric, in their messaging, and just in the enthusiasm around the campaign, they're saying, we're going to have the media cycle be about us. Trump's going to have to react to that. So then Trump's reacting to that. And when he becomes reactionary, his instincts kick in and it's a disaster. Him reacting to her being on the cover of Time Magazine was him saying she looked beautiful like Melania, but it was a sketch. It was only a sketch and I'm better looking than her. And then he gets fixated because he doesn't like having to react to a news cycle that's not about him as much. And so stuff like this is, is brilliant. I don't know if they specifically were responding to the Fox News outrage about her liking Doritos or just heard that it was a conversation and so then she gets Doritos and that triggers them even more. A right-wing publication, The Post Millennial, posted the same clip and said, Kamala can't find the Doritos during a Pennsylvania campaign stop. If any person has not walked into a gas station and had to take a few laps around to find what they're looking for at some point in their life, then they're not a person, okay? Then they've never driven, they've never done a road trip, okay? (laughs) Because that's, that's classic gas station. Where the heck? Oh, I passed them three times. That's what happened. Uh, I'm looking for, as she said, corn nuts. I used to love corn nuts. Where are the corn nuts bags? Oh, there it is. Beef jerky. Let me get some beef jerky. But I don't know why they think this is an effective line of attack because it's obviously not. Now, while we're talking about the online uh, sort of social media response or things that are, are designed to get social media conversations going, the DNC projected onto Trump Tower in Chicago the night before the Democratic National Convention, this. So on the building, it says Project 2025 HQ. I think making Project 2025 so viral is another example of what I'm talking about. Because now, what has Trump been doing? He has to say, I don't know anything about Project 2025. Then reporters report on that and talk about, well, he kind of does. And a lot of these things are perfectly aligned with things he said are his policy priorities. And the discussion, the Google searches, as we talked about, are about Project 2025. 
they're no longer about Trump's dishonest rantings against Democrats on the border. They're no longer about Trump lying about crime. It's about Project 2025. And it seemed for so long Democrats could not grab a hold of the media narrative and bend it towards the the uh, sort of territory they want to be operating on, onto their turf, right? That's the phrase I was looking for. And I think the Harris campaign is, I don't know if it's Kamala Harris herself or a combination of her and incredible staffers, is way better than what we were seeing before at saying, this is what the media is going to be talking about because we're going to, we're going to force it into the discussion. And then MAGA is going to ha have to be on their heels. MAGA is going to have to be reacting. I have come down with an illness. I think I got to add the Trump rally over the weekend. If you want to support the show that comes out in sickness and in health, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button. I think, I think that might help me get better as well. Back to the video. And then just one bonus clip that I didn't know where to put in a segment. Democratic Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado said this on Fox News. In fact, we are moving in a better direction. And listen, you know, we have the value of actually ha looking at history to see which economic philosophy and approach works be better for Americans, right? Because we've tried trickle-down economics. We've tried the top-down approach before, several times before. And then we've also tried the Biden-Harris approach of building from the middle out. We've tried both approaches. And what we know, looking at Trump's tax cuts, the vast, vast majority of that value, that wealth, went to billionaires, the largest corporations. Over 80% of the value of those tax breaks went to ta uh, tax buybacks to, rep to help CEOs, executives, billionaires. Whereas our approach to invest in people and infrastructure, education, always works better, right? We've never as a country regretted investing in people and infrastructure, right? Whether it's the interstate highway system after World War II, whether it's in investing in the GI Bill after World War II, which educated a whole generation of Americans who didn't have access to that. These policies and that approach works better. History shows it, it has proven it, and that's why I have confidence in the Biden-Harris okay. approach. Yeah, I do think even myself, okay, I'm learning a political lesson from and and will adjust accordingly uh, to this moment, which is learning that as we talked about, which was absolutely the correct analysis, the superior candidacy of Biden compared to Trump's and the strong record of Biden as a president. We understood, and so we talk about the messaging difficulties, but I don't think I quite comprehended how impactful an effective messenger is. Because then that one effective messenger can prompt others to feel more motivated to be effective messengers as surrogates. And so now what we're seeing, even as just another just random example as Trump's trying to bring the conversation back to him with that press conference where he had the food next to him to talk about high prices, a viral clip then comes out of it of him saying, Kamala Harris wants communism. She wants everyone to have health care. <laughs> and back in 2016, he was saying he wanted everyone to have health care. And it's almost like his political instincts are, are wavering after the years of him being in politics because most people don't hear... She wants to, even though she hasn't rolled out a plan for everyone to have health care, but he just sort of brought that up. Uh, they just hear that she wants you to have health care coverage, and, and he's mad about that and calling it communist, which is ridiculous. Same thing with her talking about going after price gouging. Or the rage in, in MAGA internet today has been about her giving an answer to a question about how she'll pay for her economic plans that include investing in education, the child tax credit infrastructure communities and her response was there's gonna be a return on that investment and by the way it's true that's what we've seen in a lot of the biden harris legislation is the economic growth the impact to communities is definitely accurately described as a return on investment whereas when you when you give up massive amounts of tax revenue from wealthy folks, you're not seeing a return on investment for America at large, which is the Trump economic plan. And so 
what I, th- I think most Americans see is she's talking about investing in education, infrastructure, child tax credit, uplifting families, and MAGA's calling that communism. So my big point of this segment is, aside from just people were super excited because Kamala Harris brought more energy post Biden dropping off the ticket, there's a new phenomenon that, that I think is the most consequential part of this, which is who's driving the narrative and who's reacting to it. And finally, maybe for the first time in many, many years, I'll say, MAGA Trump is not driving the narrative, and it seems that the Harris campaign is, and that is really hopeful. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments. If you want to support the work we do, you can do that uh, and get yourself members-only content by clicking the join button below.